Hello again, my name is Patrick Coleman and I am the Acquisitions Librarian here at the Minnesota Historical Society Library. Now I'm sure I don't have to tell you that in this library of 500,000 volumes we collect Minnesota history. What you may be surprised to learn is that we also try to document Minnesota culture. And one way we do that is by acquiring books that are fine press books or artist books. And this is a wonderful way to stretch our dollar to get a big bang for our buck because in one volume you often get great Minnesota literature, you get great Minnesota of, you know, fine press printing, you get great design work, and you get uh, great crafts. And some of those crafts are uh, binding, paper making, uh, just uh, it's a really good way to document a big part of Minnesota's culture and especially the culture of the of the book. Now this is uh, not something that's new although there has been a great renewed interest in this with the Minnesota Center for Book Arts opening 25 years ago in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota and they have been just doing a great job of bringing in all kinds of artists and craftspeople to work on books and disseminate their knowledge to school kids and through classes to adults and basically to uh, keep this uh, craft alive. But it's not particularly new. This is something that has a long, proud tradition in Minnesota, and it was, there was another big boom in fine press printing in the uh, early 20th century. Artists like Mary Moulton Cheney, who had a press called the Chemeth Press. You had uh, Emerson Wooling, who was the uh, longest uh, printer in the history of mankind, and uh, Fred Totten Phelps. And I wanted to show you one example of one of these uh, early books. Uh, this is uh, the text by Thomas Job, and it's The Hounds of Hell. And this was published in Minneapolis in 1928. And a beautiful, beautiful book, uh, often in the uh, early part of the 20th century. Uh, people used a typeface that, uh, rem that was reminiscent of, uh, of earlier printed books or even manuscript books. But this is a, a gorgeously done book with, um, with wonderful illustrations. But there's always, with fine press books, a colophon. And it'll tell you how limited the books are. These are usually limited to uh, you know, a, a small number of books, maybe up to 300. And sometimes there are deluxe editions of the books that are lettered copies. Uh, but they'll tell you who put the book together, who designed it, who printed it, who uh, made the paper and where it came from and, um, and anything else that you need to know about it. And uh, most importantly, they'll tell you the, um, uh, the uh, date and the publisher of the book. So that's uh, uh, kind of the history. But then there was a boom in the, uh, in the 80s of fine press printing and fine press artists. And uh, one of the, uh, the um, notable works that we have here in the collection, one of the notable artists is Gaylord Shanleck. And uh, he came in sometime in the 80s and was looking for a project. And they were about to tear down the high bridge in St. Paul and uh, he went back and looked in our newspaper files and found stories about the construction of the high bridge and other interesting facts and then he produced this uh, lovely book and uh, with uh, uh, his artwork illustrating it and it uh, ends with the, uh, the bridge in the river. It's a wonderful book but I'd encourage you to come in, take a look at them. We have uh, really literally hundreds more and it's a, a great tradition of Minnesota history and Minnesota culture and I think you'll enjoy the books. Thank you.